was the Kushan Empire Indian or foreigner? If foreigner, then why the Kushans are praised and Mughals are believed to be foreign invaders? Some people argue that Kushans were Indianized. It doesn't make them Indian. What's my opinion? Look. So apparently Akbar is an Indian, but uh, Kanishka is not Indian apparently. Look, uh, the Kushans, obviously they came from um, the Tarim River Basin region, which is present day northern Xinjiang, currently occupied by China. Now, the Kushans, their ancestors were the Tukharian, Tukhara people or Tushara people, whose mummies you still find in the region. And the Kushans, they invaded India because they were fleeing from the Huns, the Shonnu. And um, they displaced the Indo-Greek, the Yavanas, and they took over northern India, eventually much of India, and the greatest emperor was Kanishka. Now, what are the contributions of the Kushans to India? Hmm? What are the contributions? First of all, they made India immensely, immensely rich, wealthy, by controlling all the trade in Asia between East and West. They, the Kushan Empire occupied much of Central Asia, from the shores of the Aral Sea to the Caspian Sea, all the way to Xinjiang, and all the way into northern and western India. The western coast of India, including Saurashtra, where you have ports that go all the way to, that were trading with Rome. So all the trade between India and Europe, essentially Roman Empire, was controlled by the Kushans. And that made India immensely wealthy. The Kushans also traded with China and also taxed Chinese trade, whatever which, whatever happened to whatever extent, between China and Europe. So once again, that made India super wealthy. The Kushans were sun worshippers. And also, they worshipped all other gods you can imagine. <laughs> super polytheists. Um, and it is alleged, my dear friends, that Emperor Kanishka was a Buddhist, great patron of Buddhism, and the Kushans were great Buddhist patrons, right? Let's fact check that, okay? Let's see this. What percentage of Kushan coinage features Buddhist imagery slash symbology Slash the Buddha. Let's see what the answer is. Well under 1%. Buddhist imagery appears on less well under 1% of all known Kushan coins. The vast majority has a vast diverse pantheon of Greek, Iranian and Hindu deities. Okay, forget about Kushan coinage. Let's say Kanishka. Kanishka's coinage. Let's see. Once again, same question. Buddhist imagery on Kanishka's coinage is extremely rare, featuring on well under 1% of all coins issued by him. His coins had Shiva. They had various Iranian gods. They, they had Zoroastrian motives. They had Greek uh, gods because of the Greek, uh, you know, Indo-Greek uh, regions he, he, he had conquered. Lots of Indian deities. Le well under 1% of the coins have Buddha. But his portrait is a Buddhist king. Your historians are a set of inveterate liars. Your Indian historians. Liars, all of them. Okay? So the Kushans, they Indianized completely. They assimilated completely into the Indian population. Completely. Without friction whatsoever. They were culturally Indian anyway. They may have looked somewhat different initially. After a couple of generations, even that was gone. And they, they strengthened, fortified India's military. They brought in new tactics and, and strategies into India's military, standing armies, cavalry, you know, big focus on the cavalry. And uh, they, under Kushan rule, so much culture, new culture, you know, there was this great efflorescence of culture. You had the Gandhara School of Arts. You had the Mathura School of Art, very different schools of art, and beautiful art, and so much more. And the Kushans did more than anyone I can think of to spread India's culture far and wide. They spread Indian culture into China, all the way to Southeast Asia, all the way to Japan. Hinduism and also some, some Buddhism. But today it's all Buddhism, Buddhism they talk about, right? So they, they furthered the Indian national interest. They took care of India's national security, civilization security. They, 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 they enhanced India's economy significantly and they spread India's culture far and wide. But they are still foreigners. But Akbar is Indian. So, I mean, 
what logic do we have there right doesn't make any sense 